Hallelujah. Welcome to Amazing Grace. I'm Pastor Kofi Osei Tutu. Here once again with you to do I mean, what we all normally do. But today I have a very special program for you. Uh, before I go any further, I'm going to show you a video. And you know what they say, videos or pictures speak more than words. So let us watch this video and when we come back, we'll continue with the program. It has been a lifelong goal of Dr. Ohenaba Boachi Aje to make people stand straight, breathe better, and live a normal life. Today is a red letter day for Focus, for it is the translation of a dream into reality. The reality? This newly opened Focus Orthopedic Hospital in the Republic of Ghana. The hospital's mission is to provide quality, comprehensive, and affordable orthopedic care to adult and pediatric populations in underserved communities. Dr. Boachi believes that complex spine surgeries could and should be provided in developing countries. Ghana is Dr. Boachi's homeland and is one of the world's poorest nations. There is a significant lack of health care for Ghana's population of over 20 million. Life expectancy for a child born this year is just 61 and a half years. But there was no fall, no particular injury a year no. ago. Adults also face crippling knee and joint problems that make walking painful and often excruciating. They're both very worn out. They both rub the raw bone on raw bone. The only way that that can be fixed Placement. Many young adults here suffer from moderate to severe scoliosis caused by childhood infections like tuberculosis and polio. These viruses can penetrate the spinal vertebrae, causing life-threatening curvatures of the spine that may constrict breathing. Left untreated, the spine can become deformed as the patient grows and develops. It's very stiff. When, when we hold him like this, does it make it easy for him to breathe? Today, there are only 1,700 physicians caring for the 20 million residents of Ghana. Only 15 of these physicians specialize in orthopedic surgery. For every 1,000 people, there is only one hospital bed. For a nation suffering from famine, disease, and poverty, the failure to provide quality health care threatens to stagger the nation. Because of this lack of health care, in 1998, Dr. Bawachi led the first team of Focus Medical Volunteers to Ghana. Using borrowed or rented space to perform their complex surgeries, the team soon realized that a dedicated space was desperately needed. Through the generosity of donors and supporters, Focus broke ground for its own hospital in late 2008 when it acquired a 10-acre plot of land in the Accra metro area. He came with a vision he came with a passion. He's somebody who set his sights on a goal and then had a commitment, a commitment from a focus team from all over the world that he was able to lead with passion. He was able to say, follow me and look what we could create. And today's ceremony is really the culmination of that, of that vision and that focus. The 50-bed dedicated facility provides comprehensive services that include ambulatory services, diagnostics, pharmacy, laundry, physiotherapy, outpatient consultation, and surgical care. The hospital features one state-of-the-art surgical suite with two operating rooms. It is the most advanced of its kind in West Africa. This is an extraordinary achievement. Dr. Buwachi has had this dream for a very long time, and it took quite a long time. It took determination, it took inspiration, it took focus to make this happen. Four times a year, teams of 20 to 45 volunteers travel to the Focus Orthopedic Hospital to provide their services. Since inception, Focus volunteers have completed over 1,000 corrective spinal operations and have evaluated over 20,000 patients. Each mission trip brings new challenges, new breakthroughs, and builds new relationships with patients that will last a lifetime. Becoming a healer was a dream that I grew up with, and giving back was my mission. 
as we all know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It has taken many years of hard work to make this day come true. To build a hospital is great. To equip and staff it is greater. But to love to be part of the dream and the bigger picture to help save the child is the greatest. Welcome back to the program. And as you can see on the, on the video, you saw what one man by the name Dr. Ohenba Bwacheje has done to alleviate the problem, the health problems in Ghana. And not only in Ghana, but in some part of Africa, I think Sierra Leone, and uh, what he has done also in America here. So today I'm very privileged to present to you I'm going to have a talk with Dr. Ohinba Bocheje, who is in the studio with us this afternoon. Doctor, welcome. Good afternoon, Kofi. How good are afternoon. You? I'm very good, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You look yeah. pretty sharp today. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> so do you. Okay. Yes. Um, no, talking about FOCUS, how did it all start? So FOCUS stands for the Foundation of Orthopedics and Complex Spine. And I'm, I'm a professor of orthopedic surgery at Cornell Medical Center and also the chief of the scoliosis service at the Hospital for Special Surgery. And I'm also from Ghana, and I came here a long time ago, 40 years ago. Okay. But the original purpose of my coming here was to become a doctor and hopefully to be able to go back and, and help the country. It's taken very long. It's almost like Moses in the wilderness, 40 <laughs> years. Okay. But thank God, uh, about 14 years ago, mm -hmm. I established the foundation okay. uh, to be able to organize individuals, volunteers, also get medical industry mm -hmm. and corporations to help so that we can establish a, a, this organization to be able to provide health care in Ghana, mm -hmm. mainly orthopedics. Orthopedics, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in 1998, I established a foundation as a nonprofit organization in New York City. Okay. And then with the help of philanthropists and volunteers, we've been able to go back to Ghana at least two, three times a year since 1998 to provide orthopedic services until a couple of years ago when we were able to build our own hospital in Accra. Excellent. And you know, like in November, I was there, you know, as volunteer as part of uh, the team, and I was very amazed at what I saw. I mean, going to, when we were going, I thought, oh, it's just you know, a hospital where, you know, normally in Ghana when we say somebody's built a hospital, it's normally it's one building, one block, and they have different floors, maybe three, four floors, and the different departments are in, on the various floors. But when we drove from the airport straight to the hospital and as we were entering like oh my god i was i was blown away to see the, the the infrastructure the way everything has been built you know and how long did it take you to envision this kind of uh, project well it's been a lifetime project uh, okay. and i've been in new york i've been at the hospital for special surgery for 20 years now mm -hmm. so i know the standard that has been set and what it takes to provide decent health care, especially for orthopedics. It requires a sophisticated equipment, very clean environment, and also technical expertise. It is not something that you can do in any mom and pop hospital or shop. Mm -hmm. So to do that, uh, I have also traveled many countries and, and I've seen what it is to really provide decent health care in orthopedic uh, services. So building the focus hospital, I use the same standards as we have here. Amen. Because that is the only way you're going to get the results that we need. Uh, just like, you know, the Hospital for Special Surgery, which is mm -hmm. the number one orthopedic hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's all I knew is the best. The best. So I, I try that. to duplicate that, but it's very costly. But we've done it on a small scale, uh, yeah. which is just 50 beds. Yeah. Uh, with 50 beds, we are able to at least provide two state-of-the-art orthopedic rooms and also state-of-the-art equipment, which has been very costly, mm -hmm. to be able to provide the standards that I have, I'm used to in the United States. Excellent, excellent. 
Yeah, so considering the, the health condition or situation in, in, in Ghana on Africa in general, it is a very it's a very huge problem that faces Africa in general. And also how does focus fit in trying to alleviate this is, uh, uh, health issue in Africa? Yeah, we cannot solve all the problems. We can only do what we can. Mm -hmm. uh, Africa has a huge healthcare problem. In the Sub-Sahara, West, West Sub-Sahara Africa alone, more than 400 million people. About four, 38 of the 47 Sub-Sahara countries do not have the World Health uh, uh, WHO mandate for the number of physicians per population. Ghana has 25 million, mm. 26 million uh, po Probably. members mm -hmm. in the population, mm -hmm. and we have one doctor for every 13,000 people. Wow. So you can one imagine. 13,000. Yes, right. Wow. Now, in the developed world, it's one doctor for every 300, 400 people. So for 26 million people in Ghana, we have maybe 17 orthopedic surgeons. Special surgery has about 100, 100 orthopedic yes. surgeons. You know. So the disparity is huge in every area of healthcare. So when it comes to orthopedics, it's no different. Uh, so the only way we could make a difference was to have an infrastructure that could be sustainable mm -hmm. and then work in partnership with the local authorities, the Ghana Health Service, uh, the Ministry of Health, the government of Ghana, because the government also has their own issues to deal with when it comes to health care. Mm -hmm. They have malaria, public health, maternal, child health. The regional hospitals are still understaffed mm -hmm. and under-resourced. So it's the partnership with the government, it's, it's a private-public partnership to be able to supplement what is uh, already in existence. So the purpose of FOCUS was to really establish this re facility and work in concert with the government, the Ministry of Health, so that we can at least contribute to what they already have. Uh, there is no spine deformity surgeon in Ghana. There are, there are orthopedic surgeons who are inundated with trauma. Mm. And there are neurosurgeons who do some basic spine surgery. But no one that I'm aware of, at least now, back in many years ago, there was a professor, Corsa, who did some scoliosis surgery. He's long retired. Mm. So even then, that was the older methods of treating spinal deformities. Mm. So modern care for spine deformities does not exist. And as we see patients from Ethiopia, Sierra Leone, it's the same thing. Severe deformities that have gone untreated, which is really also reducing the lifespan of the individuals. Wow. So the healthcare issue is huge. It's and, when huge. It, and when it comes to orthopedics, it's no different. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, we are trying to make a, uh, we're trying to contribute okay. uh, to what is already in existence. But more needs to be done. Exactly. So, how do you see the, the future of, of this, I mean, with, uh, the way things are right now? For Focus for or focus. for the hospitals? Yeah. No, for yeah, focus, for, for yeah. focus uh, the, the, the original goal was to build the infrastructure, which God willing, we've been, you know, God yeah. so good, we've been able to achieve. Mm -hmm. And this was all done by philanthropic support, okay. donors, mm -hmm. benefactors. Uh, I've put a lot of my own resources into it. And also with the help of volunteers who have traveled, uh, given their time so mm -hmm. that we can at least have the human resource support that we need since the local support is not always available. Okay. So our goal going forward is mm -hmm. to be able to establish a academic training and professional development center so that we can train local West oh. Africans and Ghanaians mm -hmm. to become like you and I. You know, surgical mm -hmm. technologists, mm -hmm. orthopedic surgeons, spine surgeons, mm -hmm. anesthesia, nurses, uh, physician assistants, so that they can become the local caregivers. Okay. Because it's very, it's good to give a man a fish, but it's also it's best to show Teach them how to fish. Mm -hmm. And so our goal is to really train the locals. And that's, that's a tremendous uh, undertaking, but... We hope then we pray that we'll be able to achieve that. I, will, I pray that the Lord will give every every resources needed to accomplish that. You know, because to to be a um, 
a teaching facility. You know, that means it's going to be a place where last people going to come in, get trained, you know, to master their crafts and then be of help to others. Correct. Which is very, 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 very important. That is the goal. Yes. And, and not only in Ghana, but also in other parts of West Africa and beyond. So uh, the doors will open to anybody? Correct. Yeah, right now we are working with the West African College of Surgeons okay. to obtain accreditation so they can send their residents for rotations to training in orthopedics. Okay. We're also working with the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons okay. to be an established and recognized center for orthopedic education and training. Okay. We are going to establish a spine fellowship program, just as I did here in New York. New York okay. I've trained hundreds of surgeons from all over the world. Yeah, which I know. Uh, mm -hmm. And we are going to also establish a similar training in other areas in orthopedics like joint replacement surgery. Uh, recently, Dr. Ojedu, who was uh, who's a Ghanaian, Ghanaian yeah. completed a fellowship training at Special Surgery, and he's back. He's with us at Focus. Okay. So he's also going to start a joint replacement training. This is open to all Africans. Okay. So, so there's going to be like a, a, an exchange program it would, with, with the Hospital for Special Surgery? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. It will be an in-house training program in Ghana. Okay. for Ghanaians, West Africans, and Africans to have advanced postgraduate training. Those who are interested in training abroad will be able to facilitate that okay. because we won't have all the pieces for uh, the comprehensive orthopedic and fellowship training. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to sponsor and also recommend uh, qualified individuals to say special surgery to participate in the clinical fellowships like we've done in the past. In the past. So talking about sponsoring, how 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 the uh, focus I mean gets, is is it sponsored? I know it's a non-profit organization, so sponsorship is from, uh, uh, is it from the public or uh, philanthropies and? It's uh, it's, bo it's really a combination of uh, government, mm -hmm. private, individuals, corporate, okay. in kind, and then monetary donations. So because it takes so much to be able to build a hospital mm -hmm. and also it takes a lot to take care of an old, to take care of an orthopedic patient, mm -hmm. a surgery for scoliosis or spine deformity in the United States will cost at least two hundred to four or five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That is way beyond the means of anyone. So nobody can leave the country to say I'm going abroad to have scoliosis surgery. No. It's impossible. Have the money unless you have a very good insurance. So if you're a poor Ghanaian or West African with spinal deformity and you need surgical treatment, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. You cannot mm -hmm. travel to do that. Mm -hmm. And locally, even if there was a facility like we have established, mm -hmm. it's very expensive. So by being nonprofit, we don't have equity shareholders or pay dividends because we've mm -hmm. built a hospital on donations. Okay. You know? So we can reduce the cost significantly to say ten, fifteen thousand dollars for a scoliosis operation because we have to buy equipment for the surgeries. Even yeah. though we get some donated, we'll still have to buy equipment. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, local operational cost, mm -hmm. staff, staff, utilities, all of that. Mm -hmm. So we have minimum expenses that we have to meet. So those patients who are able to afford it will make that contribution. Okay. And those who can't, like children with deformities from poor families, We'll put them on our website. We have a sponsor a child section on our website okay. that you, someone can go on, identify a child who needs help, mm -hmm. and then help sp sponsor that child for surgery. Okay. okay. So that's how we get uh, around the uh, sponsorship, is the Sponsor a Child program. We also have a children's fund that we have established in Ghana okay. that individuals can make a contribution towards, which helps us sponsor more children. And then also we do fundraising in, uh, in in the United States, okay. in New York. And every year we have an annual gala whereby we get a lot of individuals coming as sponsors and donors to help. So all that together allows us to keep the hospital going, expand the facilities, improve upon it, and also to help the uh, patients who are not able to you know, contribute towards the the nominal fee Clearly. that we charge. Yeah. But it we don't turn away any child who needs help. We find a way to help them. So if somebody want to go to the website and to uh, no, to sponsor a child, uh, the website is, uh, I think you will see it on the screen, it's www.orthofocus.org. 
author is o r t h o f o c o s dot o r g you will right. see it on your screen autofocus.org so if you want to sponsor a child you can go on the website and any donation is welcome because there are so many i mean as we're talking about the health issue in 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 ghana in africa in particular is 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 huge so in any way that you can help don't be a bystander you know don't just sit on the fence we all have to contribute i've been on this program uh, uh with focus for on three occasions, I've went uh, in 2006, 2007, and just last year, 2013, I was there. And what is being done is phenomenal. I mean, it is something that needs the help of each and every one of us. You know, God blesses you to be a blessing. So look at where you are and look at yourself and say, what can I do to help somebody get better? You know, Dr. Boachi has started something which needs to be emulated that each and every one of us has to take a cue from this and say well what can i do to contribute and trust me there is something you can do all right doctor so you know in the in the, in the uh one of the videos yes you said something that when you were a child you, you know you had a situation mm -hmm. and the doctor who treated you was western trained correct and after that time you made up your mind that I want to be a doctor. Correct. And you've held on to it till now that you've li you are living the dream. Yes. That is amazing. How did you do that? <laughs> um, I guess it's destiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I true. mean, I was very young, but I remember every bit of that encounter mm -hmm. when I was very sick. And I came from a poor family, and uh, there were no doctors around in, in those days. The few that were around, we couldn't afford them. So mm -hmm. I just went around. Uh, different villages and medicine men trying to get cured. But finally, when I when my grandmother took me to the to this doctor mm -hmm. uh, in Kumasi, who had just returned from his training, mm -hmm. he, he saw our the need and also recognized our situation. And I don't think he charged us anything. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember my grandmother or my mom giving him any money. But you know, he was very willing to help me, and mm -hmm. and uh, he became a role model of mine at a very young age of about eight. And since then, I said to myself that I want to be like this fellow when I grow up. I pray and, that and what I, you are doing will also yeah. be, uh, I mean, yeah. an insti I mean, inspiration yeah. for some young one people, uh, people coming up to do similar things. I hope so. And I think the, the answer, to the question, uh, and my advice to the youth of this generation is just like St. Uh, Francis of Assisi said, mm. that start by doing something. Mm. And then the next thing you know, you are doing the, start by doing what is necessary. Okay. And then you will do the possible. And all of a sudden you're doing the impossible. Wow. So you got to start something. Start by doing what is necessary. necessary. And, and then, then you'll be doing the possible. And then you do the impossible. Correct. Wow. Okay. So you hear that? Start by doing the necessary. And then eventually you'll be, you'll be able to do the possible. And then you'll be able to do the impossible. Meaning you have to start from somewhere. Room wasn't built in a day. Many people will make a resolution, say, well, this year, oh, I'm not going to do this. And within a short time, they, they just give it up. But here is a man who, at the age of eight, decided that I want to be a caregiver. I want to be somebody who will help others, heal others. And he held on to that dream all these years. So now that he's living it, being a blessing to people all over the world. In America, I get opportunity. I'm blessed to know to have an opportunity to work with him every now and then once a week at, uh, maybe once a week at Hospital for Special Surgery. And trust me, you should see the things that God uses this man to do. It is amazing. If there's any help that you, you think you can help, if you want to be a volunteer, if you're in the medical field, you want to volunteer, you want to come on a mission, go on the website. There's an application form. So you can fill it out, and then you take it from there. Don't be a, a bystander, as I said. We have a saying in our language. Say, Ufu diapa any piano. Meaning, well, I'm going to speak it in a way, translated. When you climb a good tree, you deserve to be pushed. This is something that is worthy of emulation. This is something that is worthy of support. Let us all put our hands together and help make this a great, great, mighty success.
you never know who is gonna get the i mean the, the, who is gonna benefit from it it can be a brother of yours it can be a nephew of yours it can be a niece of yours it can be somebody of your within your family you never know okay so when you have the opportunity do something don't say well i'm not from ghana or i'm not an african whatever you do it's always it will come back to you Thank you so much, Doc, for having you. And I hope we could have had more time to talk about this. But I know you're a very busy man with your it's schedule. Okay. So whenever it's uh, possible, I really, really want to have, to have you again yeah. so we can talk more. Because okay. there are other videos that I couldn't even show All because right. of the time. I know, Kofi, and I appreciate the time you've given me on this program. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, good to chat and to be able to disseminate the information and to share our dreams and and the work that we're doing together is it's for all our it's for this cause that we live amen. amen if there's anything you want to say to the the the, the uh, audience you can yeah I, I will encourage everyone listening to this or at least uh, watching this program to at least uh, become aware of what we're doing in africa uh, many uh, other individuals have also set up programs in africa in healthcare, in nutrition they call them missions whether with a church group or by yourself but uh, let's leave our comfort zones and go out and help somebody. Many people outside there need help. They need help in many areas, and you could be that one to give that person a new lease on life or put a smile on their face. So please step out of step out, step out of your comfort comfort zone and go out there, and reach out for someone else who is yelling and praying for help. As for focus, as Kofi said. You can always reach us on our website or can call our telephone number 212-308-7730 and speak to any of the individuals, Megan or Barbara or Noel, somebody will be able to answer your questions for you. So get involved and you'll be welcome wholeheartedly in Ghana. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I know you're a very Thanks. busy man. To no make problem. the time to come, I really appreciate that. No, no, this was good. Okay. <laughs> so, you, I know you've been blessed, but stay tuned. Next week, we're going to continue. All right? Bye-bye. As the deer panted for the water so